Hello, my Mellow Mallows, I'm Spirit, and welcome to the pilot episode of Rainy Day Radio, the podcast where we explore the creative world and have a cup of coffee on the side. Still working a bit on the actual name and theme, but hey, if you have any cozy ideas for the concept, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I figured the best way to start fresh with a new series would be, well, talking about how to start fresh in a creative career. Whether you're an artist, writer, video producer, or even a streamer, finding and establishing your voice can be rather difficult in this day and age, especially in the online environment. So whether you're a newbie looking to get your foot in the door, or a veteran looking to breathe a bit of life back into your career, feel free to sit back, relax, and grab a snack. But really quickly before we get into it, if you do enjoy this episode, be sure to like, comment, and share. It lets me know to make more, and will also tell YouTube that it's content worth watching. Anywho, let's finally get started on talking about getting started. Speaking as someone who has undergone a rather long career of improvement, changes, and personal growth, the first thing I will say is that where you start will not be where you end up in the future. A lot of folks will often worry or procrastinate on not doing something because they'll look at other people's work and be like, well, my stuff isn't there now, so I won't ever be like them. In my eyes, creativity is a journey and is very much a case of exploration, growth, and carving your own path. The key here is to just get started. Whether you view someone else's work as a goal for your own skills, or just want to reach a point where you can express yourself in a way that's better than you have before. Of course, that isn't to say that getting started is easy or cheap. Creative paths or any path that requires materials to improve and complete your task can be rather expensive. Whether it be the countless pencils you burn through to improve your technique, that $2,000 computer you bought just so you could render your animation, or even just the dinky laptop you bought to write your stories, a majority of people come from humble origins. I myself started my career when I was around 13 to 14, tracing drawings I made on paper with a mouse in Photoshop as I'd barely begun to grasp the concept of colors, layers, or file types. Now, as someone in their 20s, I've upgraded my equipment, have become well-versed in multiple drawing programs, and have also expanded into New Horizons. Kind of funny to think about it, huh? I mention this not as a brag, but because I want to make it clear that starting from humble origins is not something to be ashamed of, but is actually how a lot of folks start off. It isn't bad to not understand what you're doing when you've barely done something or are lacking guidance on where you're going. As such, when you're starting, the important thing to remember is improvement will come with time, provided you're willing to be patient, be willing to practice, and most of all, be willing to change. I personally live by a motto that I came up with earlier in my career. Become better at what you're bad at, greater at what you're good at, and always keep practicing. I think for those who are looking to start a career or even just expand as a hobbyist, this is something good to keep in mind. In the context of a creative career, I've found it is most important to keep a healthy balance of both a strong desire to improve, but also an aspect of practical restraint. As I'm entering my later years of art school, I've had plenty of times where I'll read through the textbooks that tell us how to do things in a specific way. Kind of codes to success. And while those codes are helpful to some extent, everyone's experiences and methods are different. Even those who are similar will find themselves with completely different outcomes or different places from where they started. I'd equate it to almost being like having everyone be in a large room with a blindfold on and being told to walk forward. Sometimes you bump into someone and make a connection, sometimes you hit a wall and need to figure out a new direction, and sometimes you stumble and fall and have to spend time getting back up. In terms of growth, whether it be terms of skill, social media numbers, or personal, I found that the greatest thing for an artist is always making connections. We often spend so much of our time alone, working in our little corners, away from other eyes, away from talking to others. Speaking in personal terms, I don't think my career really took off until I started to make connections. Building a network of people you can talk to, seek improvement with, or gain support is ultimately one of the greatest things an artist can have, and having artist friends who you can improve alongside with is exponentially better than being alone. Of course, sometimes those connections can slowly break off, people grow apart, or changes in interest can perhaps lead to people gaining social groups different to others. In the end, finding a community, even if it is just for a time, can do wonders in working your way up. However, I do feel like I should make something clear. When you are a creator, whether you are an artist or otherwise, it is important to view your fellow creatives as people rather than tools or means to an end. I've known a few people who will talk to me only if they want something from me or will attempt to nudge me into doing something they want for free. 
We all know the stigma against doing free requests, of choosing beggars, and those who will sometimes outright harass people for things. Speaking as someone who has been taken advantage of more than a few times and has learned the hard way, you are best cutting these people out of your lives. If they aren't willing to compensate you for your time, pester you for free work as if they were paying you, or even give promise of fame or exposure, duck out. Exposure is alluring, especially to smaller artists, but there are far healthier ways to grow your branding than doing work for pennies on the dollar. For instance, if you're attempting to appeal to a certain niche, such as Dungeons & Dragons, drawing fan art for larger IPs like Critical Role is a great way to start. Of course, it does come with its own costs, but a key factor on deciding what your niche is, is deciding what you want to do for years to come. As something to consider is that fans are a bit difficult to convince to stick with you when you post something they aren't as interested in. Of course, that isn't to say that you can't have a change in interest down the road, just keep this in mind that your numbers may drop. In my eyes, a slow, healthy growth is far better than a fast growth that leads to audience burn. Though, that's a topic for another day. Ultimately, focus on forging good, healthy connections that are not one-sided, find communities that will help push you forward and give you the growth that you need to not only motivate you better, but will also provide you connections and outlets to those who can further help your growth. Actively seek out new connections if you can, and don't be surprised if some healthy relationships come out of nowhere. These can take time, but you'll find it's worth it in the end. Another factor that often inhibits the success of a lot of creatives is the nature of problem solving. In an ever-changing environment of platforms screwing creators over, volatile living conditions, and the uncertainty of a world which seems ever closer to crumbling, goals that we often put in place change. Sometimes that project you really wanted to do ended up being a flop. That thing that you put all the time and effort into didn't do as well as you would have hoped, or that one silly doodle you posted got three times more likes than the piece that you put days of time into. I've recently finished a book titled Art and Fear, written by David Bales and Ted Orland, and I feel like it provided a decent insight on this kind of situation. It was a mandatory reading for my class this previous spring, and while I didn't have the time to properly dedicate thought to it in the hustle and bustle of classes, I went back and rediscovered a section which rang out to me, especially after a year that felt like a continuous downhill in both my creative, professional, and personal life. Creative Annihilation, as it's referenced in the book, is a case where someone finally stops creating. They put down their final pencil mark, the final brushstroke, the last word upon the last page as they finally step away, never to create something in that field again. Sometimes creative annihilation happens outside of our control. An artist may suffer an injury which stops them from ever drawing again. Someone may lose their muse or find themselves experiencing something which forces them to stop. Sometimes the world moves on without them, leaving them to slowly fade out like burning coals within a fire pit. But the key difference here is that it's a choice of whether you want to reinvent yourself or allow that decline to define you. If you had asked 13-year-old me where she thought I would be in 10 years, she likely would have said that she wanted to be a famous YouTuber who creates content being seen by hundreds or even thousands, though likely more in the realm of critical analysis and talking about shows she was interested in. If you'd asked me a year ago what I would have wanted, I would have said I want to tell stories. I want to inspire people and take the wisdom I've gained and spread it to others, so that someone else can carry the torch. I want to make people think, and to help them grow to find their own path, rather than telling them how to do it for them. Everyone starts in different places, everyone has a different spark, and sometimes you find a new spark. In time, you will find yourself nearly unrecognizable to where you started five, two, even less than a year ago. There's no set way to jumpstart your creative career, and there's no set way in the long term, because you find your own path and you find your own rejuvenation when that time comes. Sure, you can learn how to grow or market your page on a certain website or teach yourself how to use a certain program, but in a constantly changing world where things are always adapting, the odds of you having to change your methodology to stay relevant are pretty high. As such, I want this episode to focus a bit more on the principles and mindsets rather than just quick and easy tricks to get famous now. Because something that works in today's age might be completely null in two years or even less. I know all of this sounds rather grim. A big factor that a lot of people who are new to a career is that a lot of them have yet to face the realities of the path ahead. 
you'll become scratched and scarred and have a lot of learning experiences that will certainly sting in the moment and have some phantom pains come the future. However, this is just a fact of life. Things will be hard regardless of what you choose, but this is the path that most people take on the path to greatness. You'll often hear stories of creators struggling, of undergoing massive failures or slumps before finally hitting it big. Careers are not just one straight line up of constant growth, and it isn't always up from here. However, every failure that you have is a learning experience and allows you an opportunity to adapt. And with each learning experience, you'll grow more wise and have more tools under your belt. And at the end of the day, if you truly do stick to it, you'll become the person that the younger you looked up to. Before you know it, you'll have gone much farther than you can ever imagine. Become better at what you're bad at. Greater at what you're good at. Be willing to change and grow and understand that pain and patience are part of the journey. You'll make new paths even when a door closes behind you. You'll never know where you'll truly end up, but if it's something you view as truly worthwhile, keep going. You'll find your place eventually. And that is it for this episode of Rainy Day Radio. Thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, be sure to like, comment, and share it around. If this thing kicks off or more people seem interested in it, I might see about making it a recurring thing. It would be nice to get back to making videos more often. A big thank you to my patrons, in particularly my three legendary patrons, Antios, Ghost Fox, Dual Thrones, as well as Cosmo. If you would like to join them up on screen and get other perks like discounts on my commissions and personal art tutoring, follow the link below at patreon.com forward slash spirit productions. And lastly, if you would like to keep up with me, be sure to follow me on my social media pages, particularly on Twitter and Instagram where I post my art. I'm also making a point to stream more often on Twitch, so if you want to catch me live, be sure to follow me there in the description. Thank you all once again for watching. I'm Spirit, and I will see you next time.